What's up? Welcome to Tales Tomorrow. I'm Maro, your storyteller for today, and with me have some more RPG horror stories. Over here in North Carolina, we recently had a major hurricane come through and absolutely demolish Western North Carolina. Uh, I'm on the East Coast, so luckily I didn't get barely any of that. And now there's another hurricane that basically went through and wrecked like a huge chunk of Florida as well. East Coast is just getting bullied. If you or a loved one is currently dealing with hurricane aftermath, I wish them the very, very best and hope things go and, you know, turn out all right for you. But either way, let's get some RPG horror stories for today. Drunk cop threatens to arrest DM. This happened at a game shop in the city. Generally, I play D&D with a fairly nice community. The DM has been running games for our group, plus other players in the game shop who come in and out of games for years now. One of these transient players, as I'll refer to him, happened to be a cop. Had been coming to the game shop for a few months by this point and was chill with the DM. He ended up joining our table and rolling up a drow wizard. Now, this guy had a drinking problem and would often show up buzzed. He would straight up bring beer or whiskey, which was technically against the rules, but the employees never really enforced the no alcohol rule. Mmm, d and whiskey. This totally can go wrong, can it? It's totally not going to be abused entirely to make an awkward situation for everybody. Foreshadowing. This led to the character being a bit chaotic stupid, be it him getting involved in edgelord murder hobo antics, missing important information because he's not paying attention, or can't pay attention, talking over other players, going on random rants that have nothing to do with the game, etc. When he got too drunk, we'll just ignore him as much as possible, but he did get himself killed on one of these mountains where our goal was to cross a chasm. He was particularly sloshed that day, and decided to use a third level flying spell to cross a big ass chasm filled with enemy archers and evil birds. We all had previously decided to cross via the cave system. There was zero chance he was going to make it and DM said, your character feels the cold ethereal embrace of death as he considers what he's about to do. And then out of game says, are you sure you want to do this? If your DM hits you with an are you sure, this is a time to reconsider your actions or at least consider the fact that if you roll low, your character will probably end up going through some sort of a failure state, which could include death. Also, the alcohol was a problem for a while. Why didn't you guys like, you know, have like a sit down before the cop arrived, be like, hey, uh, Jim keeps coming in slosh or keeps bringing whiskey and then he just becomes belligerent. DM, can you talk to Jimmy and like ask him to do something about it? Maybe say, hey, Jimmy, no alcohol at the table table please just don't bring it leave it at home i don't know maybe he wasn't so bad maybe this one specific moment where he's actually gonna go really really bad or something because he's gonna react terrible to his character's bad decisions but hey play stupid games win stupid prizes and jimmy's about to win i don't know if the guy's actual name is jimmy but we're just gonna go with it jimmy the cop is about to get a really stupid prize and he says yeah let me fly across it god damn it y'all just pussies and so he did DM had him roll acrobatics to see how well he could evade attacks to avoid an encounter that would almost certainly lead him falling to his death. He ended up encountering a gang of Arakakra and rocks about one third part of the way across the chasm and we were way too far to help him. The encounter was brutal and he was down, fell from a height of 4,000 feet and died instantly. After a few seconds, it finally dawned on him that this wasn't a roll for death saves or wait for the party to heal you type of death. He was dead dead. He said, what the hell man, I was gonna make it. DM said, no, you most certainly would not. Even if you passed that agility check and avoided the encounter, there were several points in which you would have had to pass. It was practically impossible. The player then said, oh I see, you just wanted to kill me off and what for? You got a problem with me or something? You do know I'm a cop, right? I could have you arrested, a bucko. And trust me, you would not last a day in prison without getting your a-hole rearranged. <laughs> Arresting your DM because of a D&D game. I didn't realize that being a DM and narrating someone's death was a criminal charge. If that's the case, then somebody take me. <laughs> So stupid. I can't believe that he's like flexing the fact that he's a cop and get somebody arrested over D and D. To say that is stupid and belligerent is an understatement. But is it funny? <laughs> yeah, it's really funny because of how dumb it is. DM then kind of froze as his drunk idiot was threatening him like this over a D and D game. Thankfully, one of the other players wasn't having it and said, "Do it then." In fact, take us all down to the station. 
drunkenly drive your beat up car down to the police station and explain to your boss the DM is under arrest for the high crime of having pretend bird men kill roll dice to kill off your pretend dark health. He then got up and stormed out while cussing DM out and ranting about how stupid the game was and how he was never going to play D&D again. We never did see him back in the store after that. Oh, that criminal DM avoids the charges and avoids the arrest today. But mark my words, the time will come when all evil DMs will <laughs> receive the... But I, I can't even like continue with the joke. It is so absurd and silly. I think there's a phrasing like drunk man's ramblings and honest man's thoughts. So maybe the guy actually does fantasize about arresting people over d, &D. I don't know. Either way, this is... <laughs> This is dumb. And a cop threatens to arrest you over D&D. &D. What a criminal we are when we DM the players do something bad. <laughs> Take me to jail right now. <laughs> what a silly story to start off the day. Either way, let's get to the next story for today. How not to treat people you're trying to get into TTRPGs. All right, so this happened about 2018. I was working part-time at a bookshop attached to a cafe in my hometown, which is one of those places you're basically never gonna get a game going. There were a few other young nerdy types working in the cafe. I was in my late 20s, everyone else was 21 or so. As things went on, I started to get friendly, but not full on friends with the others. A guy and two girls, let's call them B, K, and J. I will not be calling them B, K, and J. I'ma go with Bob, Kelly, and Jelly? I could do Jane, but Je Kelly and Jelly sound kind of fun to say. So we gotta go with Bob, Kelly, and Jelly. Bob rubs me up in that way where he annoys me, but I give him the benefit of the doubt because I know how it is. Sometimes young guys on the spectrum need patience and prodding so they don't become an eternal that guy. He's also the one who brings up starting a game because he has a bunch of D&D 5e books he wanted to play for years, but can never find enough people willing to play. Kelly is generally the diplomat of the group, capable of riding that line between the soft and hard play styles, know when it's goof off and take things seriously. Jelly is definitely the outlier of the group. I think she was definitely on a spectrum, super nervous, first time ever doing some kind of hobby like this, very far in the soft end of things, not especially interested in combat. After about a month of talking, we all agreed to start playing in a shop once a week, after hours, with the owner's permission. Bob naturally is DM, and his lack of people skills becomes a very apparent quick. Session 0, he spends the entire time snarking about the choices we made during character creation, and complaining that they aren't consistent with a bunch of Forgotten Realms lore that none of us are familiar with or care about, and basically hounding poor Jelly because she is so nervous and unsure about what she is doing or what she should do for backstory. It's not a brilliant start, but I chalk it up to teething pains. If you want to get people into d, &D the one thing you don't want to do is rag on them for their character creation choices. In fact, if you want to make the character creation experience so memorable and enjoyable, is by helping them. Give them suggestions, explain them basic lore if they're interested in that sort of thing. Work with him, not blambast him over their choices. <sighs> I can't, I can't believe we picked a wood elf over a high elf. Don't you know the high elf lore is so much better? Yeah, we don't care, Bob. How about you help people out and actually get them acclimated to the game instead of mocking them for their choices? They're brand new players to the game that don't know what's going on. The least you could do is at least help them guide them through to buy different classes, races, the lore, the backstory stuff, and just in general. Because what you're doing right now is gonna push people away, not get them to want to try the hobby again, let me tell you. Naturally, next week we launch into Lost Might of Fan Delver. We are promptly greeted with the most merciless, frustrating meat grinder with no fun rules as set in stone interpretation of that newbie campaign you can imagine. Total refusal to use a dice screen or fudge rolls so that we could actually survive encounters or pass checks that would have given us more enjoyable experience. Anything past the most surface level silly voices roleplaying was grey rocked. Jelly getting her turn was treated like a chore and Bob would flatly shoot down any attempt she made at thinking outside the box. For example, she took the cloak that can change colors and styles as a common magic item wanted to use it to match the woods we were in as camo. Because rules as written did not specifically mention it as a possibility. Session 2 ends early when we land in combat and due to his disdain for the idea that a new player is surviving so they could actually want to keep playing is a good thing, 
my draw monk ends up splattered by an unexpected bugbear after triggering what looked like an easy, winnable fight. Punishing creative thinking? What is Bob on about? One of the most fun parts about D&D is players thinking outside the box. If the players are thinking outside the box, they're actually getting engaged with the mechanics and trying to find ways to creatively interact with the world around them. That is like the best part about it. Why would you want to punish that sort of thing? If a player is using a cloak of changing colors to match themselves and blend in with the trees, I would want to throw them a bone and reward them for such a thing. Reward them for such an endeavor. Reward them for thinking outside the box and actually wanting to participate in the game. But no, according to Bob, if it's not rules is written, you can have it. Also, don't force your players, especially the new ones, go through a meat grinder. Nice balance between combat and non-combat is kind of important. If everything is a meat grinder, it's gonna slow down to a crawl and nobody's gonna have fun unless that's all you wanna do. I understand some players just all wanna do is just combat, combat, combat. If you're playing with players like that, then yeah, meat grinder might be their forte or like some sort of a meat grinder dungeon crawl combined together. But for new players that are kind of learning the ropes and not really sure if they like combat or what to do, give them something that's a bit of balance of both so they can try everything. So no big, I guess. We stop for a week, I roll up a half orc fighter, Kelly and Jelly are allowed to hit level 2. Great. Resume next week to be told that we can't go back to the cave we're investigating because it's now swarming with every goblin in the area plotting something. So we move on. We then spend the rest of session 3 on a wild goose chase for any kind of plot hook, try to take a back seat so Kelly and Jelly can get more time and agency over what happens, only to watch Bob constantly push the situation with their characters, Centaur, Druid, and Halfling Bard, were completely out of their element, between the crime gang and the dragon cultists running around, railroading me into stepping in when I was happy for my character to be dumb muscle of the party. Except, oh look, more skill checks that we can't pass without any alternate way to get that info on offer. Bob sounds like a kind of guy that probably expects the players to know all the rules already ahead of time, or at least know what he knows, but like, the new people, Bob. Why don't you talk to them, give them options, give them a little bit of a bone. I get some DMs like to have a very hands-off approach. And if you have an experienced group and you're used to that sort of thing, then that's fine. But if you have brand new players, the least you could do is, I don't know, go a tiny bit more tutorial mode. I know it sounds maybe demeaning, but I genuinely mean it as like a useful tool. If the players don't know what to do, as a DM, I don't think it's a bad thing to say, well, you could try this as an option, but also you could try that as an option, you know? Get them acclimated to think a little bit outside the box and pay attention to the environment and stuff without completely being like, okay, players, what do you do? You won't do the skill check? Eh, don't work. Incorrect answer. Do something else instead. This was my new player experience. Yeah, I probably wouldn't be that interested in trying the game out again, honestly. This sounds like a very lousy new player experience. This leads up to what was the end game for Bob the entire time. A heavily railroaded TPK. We end up bounty hunting a band of orcs. Great! Finally a solid goal for us, right? We track them to a cave, ask for a description, pass our investigation checks, and nothing about the environment sticks out. So we grit our teeth, stealth thin, try to coordinate combat this time, and oh look, we get steamrolled and all of us are dead within three rounds of combat. Campaign over and Oh look, I'd conveniently agree to DM the next campaign while having nowhere near enough experience to know what the hell I was doing. Jelly decided she doesn't want to play anymore because it wasn't as much fun as she thought it was, the bookshop is now closed for repairs, and Kelly is now in dispute with our former boss for unpaid holiday time when she was moving on from the business so we aren't playing there anymore, move to the flat I'm in the process of moving in with. Dude, nothing is worse than a DM planning for a TPK, plotting for a TPK. If a TPK happens, a TPK happens. One of the most dick things a DM can do is plan for a TPK to happen because that's the end goal. Which means no matter how much the players will do or the, any sort of agency that try to put into their actions, at the end of the day, like the script is already written. This is the part where you guys go and get a TPK. And if a DM is plotting for a TPK, you know they're gonna be gunning down, trying to do everything they can for a TPK. And that's an unfair way just to end the campaign. If you can't continue the campaign, you think it's just not going great, just let people know, hey, can we just start over or something or try a different module? <laughs> don't plan for a TPK if you don't know if you can handle it. Or maybe, I don't know, to Bob, maybe a TPK sounds like the most dramatic, epic story quest that possibly could have happened in this situation instead of 
you know, letting players live and actually complete the module and stuff. Anyway, now we have a brand new DM. OP is taking over as a DM and they're moving on from the game store to their flat because of business uh, issues and stuff like that. Let's see how this plays out. The rest all condense. I end up running a campaign I was trying to cobble together on a week by week basis. What well, was basically an ongoing MacGuffin hunt that was an excuse for Bob and Kelly to follow the character arcs. Bob also took advantage of my lack of BS detector to run the most OP homebrew take on a blade singer you will ever have seen and constantly meta games. Wrote memorization on stat blocks, abuse of animal companion, and unseen servant. We have another player joined through a friend or work colleague who is an even bigger that guy in a different way. Generic leather jacket, insincere AF, edge lordy Marvel quips guy who basically was in a few other games and who never names his characters properly. Though always some annoying gimmick build with a random nonsense name, joins and start dating Kelly, which gets old fast. One of my longtime friends joins an occasional party member and things get a little more bearable. Then one day Bob and Kelly are at complete loggerheads due to him attacking her verbally because of the ongoing dispute with our former boss. I make them sit down, talk it out, get Bob to stop being so overdramatic, things seemingly back to normal. Bob brings his girlfriend as one of the party members for a heist that's like the season 1 finale where the next stage of the adventure is revealed. Things seem to go good, everyone's having fun, even my then girlfriend joins in on the table banter despite having no interest in the game itself, except Bob. The entire time he seems somewhere between deflated or on the edge of angry the entire session, especially about the fact that his girlfriend was getting along better with the group than him. Probably doesn't help at this point that I caught on to his BS, started using my DM screen and fudging some of my rolls so that he actually gets consequences in combat, started using my own alternate stat lines for creatures and enemies so you can cheat and metagame encounters. We'll finish up with that night with the agreement to reconvene in about 3 weeks so I have time to actually plan out a bunch of branching paths and how they might play out, make some new monsters, NPCs, factions, etc. Doesn't matter. Two days after, Bob says he's done with the group and wants his books back. No one else, including me, cares enough to continue the campaign, as is with the group just fizzled out naturally in the following week. So yeah, the TLDR version is Eternal That Guy finally gets a D&D group, expects a group of complete newbies to be playing a critical role standard, makes one player so miserable she gives up on a hobby completely, and tricks a noob into DMing so you can run the kind of character an experienced DM would veto on sight, gets bitter when it starts being all about him, and causes the group to disintegrate. Oh my god, this is a lot to handle. DM, not, not, the, not, not Bob, but OP, OP DM. You've done the best that you possibly could, and I commend you for sticking the out through this whole endeavor, honestly. But Bob, oh god, Bob is just a piece of work. Not only is he making the new play experience so miserable to the point where one play just ends up just completely quitting because, yeah, what, what Bob provided her sucks. Just sucks absolute donkey nuts. And then Bob continues to be absolute dick, not as a DM but as a player, and playing some sort of overpowered and playing some sort of overpowered homebrew busted up blade singer version. I'm not sure what exactly he was playing specifically, but all the metagaming and stuff was just completely unnecessary and just over the top. I feel like Bob is the kind of guy that just wanted to make everything about himself. Wanted to be the main hero of his own D&D story that he's playing. Not the players that are playing, but all these NPCs and all the busted encounters and TPKs and stuff that he wanted to plan out. Or maybe it was a trap to make somebody be the DM later so that Bob could play his own overpowered homebrew nonsense and do his own metagaming stuff on his side. And to deal with that and manage that for so long, for OP to do that for so long, I commend you OP. That takes guts. Yeah, this is a terrible way to introduce new players to your own favorite hobby. If you have a chance to introduce other people, your friends, colleagues, whoever, to your hobby, whether it be D&D, or any other TTRPG, or really, hell, anything, the least you can do is give them a more of a beginner-friendly experience, they get them to learn about it and understand it, so they can actually want to do it more. If they're just thrown into the meat grinder and don't know what's going on, and are berated for their choices during character creation, you're already starting off on an extremely wrong foot here. When I introduce my friends to D&D and try to teach them D&D, as a lot of them are brand new to the hobby, I was a little worried that maybe I was being a little bit pushy, or maybe not pushy enough, or something, you know? Maybe I was missing some sort of an element to get them acclimated to the game a little bit better. But after reading this, uh, I can confidently say I did a pretty okay job. I definitely didn't do what Bob did, that's for sure. And with that, that's gonna be all our stories for today.
I want to thank you very much for watching and thanks so much for being here. If you like what I do, consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like. Also, if the RPG horror stories ever goes down or if you want to submit your own personalized horror story, email is down in the description below. I'll see you again in more Tales tomorrow. Bye-bye.